and anyways because time is fast then let me see what is going on in your class I posted, as I'm seeing from your class page, someone is saying that I didn't get last week's lecture notes. I posted the lecture notes right after the class, didn't I? Yes, October. It is October. I didn't send the notes after the class. I've not seen it. I don't know. Let me check. It. Wow. How is this possible? Yes, the October 22nd, I posted the class. Okay, no, that's the work we did. Yes. Oh, that was an omission. Please, right after class, if you don't get a lecture notes one hour after end of lectures, notify me. It will just be that I went into something else and then did not come back. Okay. So whenever we finish a lecture and you don't see the notes one hour after the class, just just draw my attention to it. Okay. This bit. Okay. Oh wow! And it means that you guys didn't have any take-home assignment. We ended the class last week with um, we're doing work on the binary code, the the BCD codes, right? Um, so it means none of you have even revised or read anything. Okay. Well, we are just going to continue. And um, so the, that's when we started seeing the BCD codes. We, we explained, I explained to you guys um, the reason for coding and why um, we have to use some of these codes in, in digital systems. So we looked at the 8421, 4221, and then the 5421 codes. And you guys were able to formulate right different numbers in each of the codes so so then we are going to look at how to convert from the bcd code to um to binary which is um, what we, we we are familiar with so if you want to convert a given number can you all see my slide yes madam okay great i can see you guys okay All right, so if you want to convert from a given number to binary, sorry, from a BCD um, um, number to binary, what you have to do is to first write the decimal equivalent of that number, then you convert the, the, the decimal to binary. So again, since decimal is what we are all conversing with, it's, it's, it's commonplace, it's almost part of us right now. We will always move to decimal, then we can move to other radices. So, um, if for example, you can have this here, um, so we have a BCD number 0010001.0111.0101. So, to convert this BCD number to, bina to a binary number, we first of all convert it to decimal and you if you remember from last week i would have asked but because you guys don't have the notes i don't know if you can even remember what we did last week if you remember from last week we said that to convert from a decimal number from any number to uh from any decimal number to bcd code you take each individual digit in the decimal number and replace it with its four bit binary equivalent if you remember right so the same thing if you want to go back from bcd to decimal then it means that we will take each of the four bits binary numbers and take their equivalent decimal. So if we take this, um, if we take this, for instance, we know that in binary, this number is going to be what? Well, this is two to the zero, two to the one, two squared, two cubed. The, all these ones are zero. So the only one that is saying is two to the one. So this first number is two. The decimal equivalent is two. The next four bits, the decimal equivalent will be what? Nine straight away because this is eight plus one. Because it's two cubed and this two to the zero. So this is nine. Then point, if we take this one, right? This two to the, um, uh, this is, 
one plus what would this be? This is one plus two plus. Madam, please can you uh, yes. in my uh, the page a little? You can see the screen very well. Yes, madam. Um, let's see. Just a minute. Let me see. Can you guys see my slide now? Yes, madam. Yes, madam. We can. We can see now. Okay. All right. Um, just a minute, let me respond to so so um this one if we are converting it to binary, sorry to decimal, this is going to be what one plus two plus four right is that yes one plus two plus four that will give you seven and then this is what two to the zero which is one plus two to the two squared which is four so that will give you seven five so the corresponding decimal number is 29.75 and then the binary equivalent of this is going to be what what do we do to get the binary equivalent we are going to use the div divisor and remainder theory, uh, uh, theory right so we divide this by two, and if you do that task, the integer part is going to be one, 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 zero, one. And then the um, fractional part is going to be 0.11. So that the binary equivalent of the BCD number 0010, 1001, is equivalent to 11101.11. So um, in binary. So that is a conversion, it's very easy and straightforward. Um, uh, does anybody have any question? I'm showing uh, my slide, I'm using the slide now, slide mode, so I can't see your chat box if you guys are saying anything. So if anybody wants to say anything, just unmute your mic and then speak up because I can't see the chat box right now to see what is you guys are saying over there since I had to maximize the screen. But I, I guess this is pretty straightforward. So we'll just uh, move on. Then if we want to convert to from binary to BCD, we just do the reverse, right? It is the same process. So we would move from binary to decimal, then we convert the decimal to BCD. So for instance, if we have um, this decimal number 171.625, the binary, the, um, um, what is it called? The binary equivalent, sorry, the BCD. Okay, we are converting from binary to BCD, right? So if we have a binary number 10101011.111, we will get the binary equivalent. So the binary equivalent, sorry, the decimal equivalent for this number is going to be what? This will be two to the zero plus two to the one. And that's three. This is two squared, this is two cubed. This is eight, right? Two cubed is eight. Then two to the power four here. Two to the power five here, this is 32. Then two to the power six, two to the power seven here is what? It's one, two, eight, right? So we are having one, two, eight plus 32. Is one to eight plus thirty two plus eight plus two plus one. It should give you one seven one. Then this side is two to the power minus one, which is zero point five, and then two to the power minus three. This one over eight. I think this is what this is zero point one two five. So it should give you zero point six two five. So we have the binary now, and then the decimal now. Sorry. And then we can easily convert from decimal to binary. And that's just going to be what? We take the each digit and replace it with the four bit um, binary equivalent. So if we take the first one, this is going to be 0001. If we take seven, it's 0111. If we take one again, another 0001. Then if we take six, this is 0110. If we take two, this is zero, zero, one, zero. And then if we take five, this is zero, one, zero, one. Remember, I told you guys that 
every time that the type of BCD code is not stated, if it is not stated that it is um, 5421 or 4221, always assume that it is 8421 because that's what is most widely used. Unless it is stated that that code is in 4221 or 5421, we always take it to be in the 8421 weighted position. Okay, so that's that for conversion, and I hope that you guys will be able to. Um, maybe I'll get some homeworks and things for you guys to do so they're easy for your practice. Now, let's look at another type of code called the gray code. So, in the gray code conversion, let's uh, move from here. It's another type of um, uh, binary coding and it has a very simple way to code a number so if we have a binary number we can code it in the following process i'll come back to this table okay if you have any number you can convert it to binary then you can code it to uh, uh, to a gray code using this process now if we have a given gray code number okay sorry a given binary number the number can be converted into its gray code equivalent by going through the following four steps so this is what happens you take the most significant bit of the binary number right and then you write it down the most significant bit of a binary number is the same as the most significant bit of the gray code number. So the, the first uh, 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 bit or the first binary digit in a binary number is going to be the same as the first binary digit in a gray code number. Then now, the second most significant bit adjacent to the most significant bit in the gray code number is obtained by adding the most significant bit and the second most significant bit of the binary number and ignoring the carry if any don't worry the english is plenty but we will look at an example and then it's going to be very very clear it's, it's very straightforward so um so you ignore the carry if any so that is if the most significant bit adjacent to it are both one then the corresponding gray code bit will be a zero and then we ignore the carry then we continue the process, the third most significant bit adjacent to the second most significant bit in the gray code number is obtained by adding the second most significant bit to the third most significant bit in the binary number and then you ignore the carry. The process continues until the least significant bit of the gray code number is obtained by the addition of the least significant bit to the next higher adjacent bit of the binary number. So let's let's look at this example here, for instance. So we have um, the conversion process. So we have a binary number here, 1011 base 2. To convert this number into its gray code, this is what we do. The first, the most significant bit of the binary number is the same as the most significant bit of the gray code number. Okay, so we'll write it down. So it's one here. We are going to have one here. Then the next digit, the next binary digit of the gray code is going to be obtained by adding the next most significant bit to the most significant bit. So we are going to add to the most significant bit of the gray code. So not of the, let, let's go back. So the second most significant bit adjacent to the most significant bit in the gray code number. It's obtained by adding the most significant bit to the second most significant bit of the binary number, sorry, and then you ignore the carry. So this is what we are going to do. So the next uh, binary digit of the gray code number is going to be obtained by taking this next one and add it to this first one. So our next bit is going to be a zero plus one, right? And that's just going to give us one. So it's one, there's no carry. So we have um, our first di uh, binary digit is one. The next one is one for our gray code. Then the third one is also going to be obtained by adding the third bit here to the second one. So we have one plus zero again, and it's going to give us one. And then the last one, which is this last digit, is going to be obtained by adding this and this. So we are going to have one plus one again, 
which is a zero and a carry of one. So we ignore the carry. So that's just going to give us one, 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 zero. So the, the binary, um, uh, the gray code equivalent of the binary number one, zero, one, one is just going to be one, 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 zero. Let's, let's look at another example. Let me see. Um, if we take the number, so we have a table here that has all the um, gray code gray code for 1 to 15. So let's take a number, a number like 7. Okay, let's take a number like 7 and then we work out an example. So if we have, um, just a second, let me see if I can get the white board. Is there any chance here? No chance. We have 13, 13 people in class right now. I hope the class read is here and is taking attendance. Sorry, let me put down my... It's so high. Okay. Um, let me... I'm trying to get the... Let's see if you can use the whiteboard. Okay, so I've sent you guys a, a request for us to use the whiteboard. Can you all see the whiteboard? Okay, Michael, Michael Duke is already in the in the class. Okay, Joseph is also has joined the whiteboard. So I'm waiting for awesome. So I think you guys know your way around. Okay, Abdul. So I'm just waiting for a few more people to get on the whiteboard and then we'll The rest where is my lady. I am what's her name again. Deborah. Where is Deborah? I hope or is destiny rather. No, it's Deborah. I want to close the whiteboard. All right, so we have um, we have the number seven would be what one. Sorry, seven would be where is the eraser? Hello. So seven will be zero one 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 right because of this class i want to get um, um a tablet or a laptop with a pen so that we can easily write so seven will be zero one 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 right and we want to do the gray code equivalent i'm not seeing a lot of you here they are just there are just about okay seven people here now out of 13 of you so there are six more who are here too So that's, that's seven, zero, one, one, one. So if we follow the four steps, the first, this is in binary, this is in base two, right? So the first digit of the gray code number is the same as the first bit, the most significant bit in the binary number. So the first gray code is going to be zero, right? The next bit is obtained by adding the next most significant bit to the most significant bit. So we'll have one plus zero, and this is just going to be what, one? Then the third is going to be, we add this plus this. So this is one plus one, and it's zero with a carry of one. So we write the number and ignore the carry. So we'll have, we have that zero, 
Then the last bit is also going to be one plus one, and it's also another zero, and then we ignore the carry. So this um, numbers, this binary uh, um, number zero one 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 is the same as zero one zero zero in gray. So this is the gray equivalent of that of that number. Okay, so let's take another one. What is um? Let's take the number one one zero one. Is that what we did in the first? So one one zero one is equivalent to what? One one zero one. So one one zero one. So this one, the gray equivalent. This is in base two. If we want to convert this to gray, we are going to have what? Our first digit is going to be one. The next one is going to be what? One plus one, that's a zero with a carry of one, we ignore. The next one will be zero plus one, and that will just give us one. And then the next one again will be one plus zero, and that's just going to give us another one. This is in gray. So we have that. So do you guys want to do a conversion quickly? Can you convert the number, uh, let's see, 48 to binary, and then let's change it, see how we can change it to gray. What is the number 48 base 10 in binary quickly? I need someone to give me um, the binary equivalent of the number 48. Okay, Abdul says it's one one zero zero zero. Abdul, is it four zeros? Is that is that four zeros or five zeros? Okay, four zeros. One one zero 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 zero. So that's forty eight in base two. And then if we want to convert it to gray, the first digit is going to be one, right? The next digit is going to be one plus one, and that's going to be a zero. We ignore the carry. The next one will be zero plus one, and that's going to be a one. Right, that's the third one. Then the next is going to be zero, 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 obviously, because if we add, we'll still get zero, zero, zero. So that's the gray equivalent of, of that number as well. So that's a great equivalent of that number. So let's go back now to, our, I'm just minimizing the board. Let's go back to our slide and then we see um, the different gray equivalent of different numbers. So that moving a little fast because it looks like I'll be having several meetings on Wednesdays and Thursdays and I don't know when your classes will be interrupted. So whenever we have the period, we just need to use cover as much as possible um so let's see so we have this and um i hope you guys can see my my slide so you can see here this is the binary equivalent of this so we have this is obviously going to be zero 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 similarly this will be zero 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 one this one is what zero the next digit is zero plus zero, we have zero. One plus zero, we have one. Then zero plus one, we have one again. If we take this, this is zero. The next one is zero plus zero, which gives us zero. The next is one plus zero, that gives us zero. And then the next is one plus one, which is a zero, because we are ignoring the carry. If we have all the way, let's take um, 40. One, 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 zero. The first digit is one. The next one is one plus zero, which is zero. The next one is one plus, sorry, one plus one, which is zero. The next one again is one plus one, which is another zero. And then the last one is zero plus one, which is one. So I'm sure you all see the flow with the, um, with the gray code, binary to gray equivalent. So again, if you want to convert from any number to gray, from any radix to gray, you first of all convert it to binary. If it's in another radius entirely, say hexadecimal, then you need to convert the hexadecimal first to decimal, 
Then you convert the decimal to binary. Then you convert the binary to gray. So decimal and binary are, are, the, are the two um, common radices that we are dealing with in digital. The decimal, because that's what we know or we are conversant with. And then the binary, because we are working in digital systems. And digital systems work with binary digits. Okay. So um, now we, we should look at gray to binary conversion. Now, to convert from gray back to binary, okay, we are still going to go through four steps. There's just a very little trick. It's not even a trick. It's just something for you to know. So you begin again with the most significant bit, and the most significant bit of the gray code number is the same as the most significant bit of the binary number. So if you have your gray code, the first binary digit is going to be the first, your first binary digit in binary. Then the next, the, the bit next to the most significant bit, which is the second most significant bit in the binary number, is obtained by adding, sorry, is obtained by adding the most significant bit in the binary number. Look at it carefully. The most significant bit in the binary number to the second most significant bit in the gray code number. So this time we are we are adding across disregarding the carry if there's any then you continue that process until you get to the least significant bit so see what happens here you remember the first one we converted to this right so if we have um, the conversion of this gray code number 1110 into its binary equivalent first you write down the one okay the first binary digit is going to be one then the next binary digit is going to be obtained. Let's go back to the text. So, so that you see clearly. Then the bit next to the most significant bit in the binary number is obtained by adding the most significant bit in the binary number to the second most significant bit in the gray code number. So this is what we are doing. We are going to add this number to this to obtain our next a binary digit. So our next binary digit is going to be one plus one, and that's going to be a zero. We ignore the carry. The third one is going to be a zero plus one. So are you see how we are adding? When we're doing from binary to gray, we're adding the adjacent numbers in the binary digits. But when we are doing from gray to binary, we are adding a um, um, preceding binary number to the next. Um, gray, gray, digi uh, uh, gray digit in the gray code number. So we have um, a one here. Then this one plus one is going to give us a zero. We ignore the carry. Then our next binary digit is going to be this zero plus this one. And then it's going to be a one. And then our last digit is going to be this one plus this zero. And this is also going to give us a one. So now we have gotten a binary digit, which is one zero one one. Now let's go back to our whiteboard and then look at something. Let's go back to our whiteboard. So now this, this was a, a number that we had in binary and we converted it to gray. So if we want to move this gray back to binary, what are we going to do? Our first digit here is going to be a one, right? Our next digit is going to be this one, plus zero and next digit is going to be this one plus zero and we are going to have what another one right then the next digit is going to be this one plus one and we are going to have a zero and we ignore the carry and then our last digit is going to be this zero plus this one and then we are going to have our one and that is our binary in base two so you see that we've been able to go back from our gray to our binary so for, for binary to gray, you are adding the adjacent binary digits. For gray to binary, you are adding the preceding um, binary number to the next bit in the gray code number. Keeping in mind that the first, uh, the first digits are always the same for both the binary and the gray. Is it clear? Do we have any question? I'm putting my eyes on the chat box. 
Madam. Even sometimes. Madam, please. To uh, hear you. Madam. Yeah, I'm listening now. Please, uh, grip code to binary. Can you explain it again? Okay, so I'll just go back to the text so that you see. Um. But we've even done an example, two examples. Is it that you were not following or you just got lost along the line? So let's let's see explanation in the text. I think that's the best. So great to so great to binary conversion. So a given gray code number can be converted into its binary equivalent by going through the following steps. First, begin with the most significant bit. So the most significant bit of the binary number, which is what you're looking for, is the same as the most significant bit of the gray code number. That is established, right? So clear. So if we have a gray code number, say 11111, Zero 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 one one one. The most significant bit of the of the binary will be the one of the grade. So you write down the one. Now, the next bit to the most significant bit. So the second most significant bit of the in the binary number is obtained by adding the most significant bit in the binary number to the second most significant bit in the gray code number. So you take your binary number that you've got, and then you add it to the next bit in the gray code number to obtain that bit. So if you want the second binary number of um, a gray code, you take the, the, the first di binary digit that you've got in your binary and add it to the second one of the gray to get your second binary. Then you take that to get the third one, you take the second binary digit in your binary number and add it to the third the most significant bit in the gray code number. So let's read it. The third most significant bit in the binary number is obtained by adding the second most significant bit in the binary number to the third most significant bit in the gray code number and ignoring the carry. You follow the process until you get until you get to the what the least significant bit. Okay. So let's see. Uh, sorry. I've, I've gotten it now. Okay, so let's, let's um, just for the sake of maybe people who like who may be like you, but then will not speak out. Let's look at um, this other example again. Uh, let's come back to our number 48 that you converted for us. So this is a gray. If we want to go back to if we want to go back to the binary, this is a gray. If we want to go back to the binary, the most significant bit, oops, the most significant bit here is going to be, let me erase this one. So the most significant bit here is going to be same, uh, same one, right? Then the second, most significant bit is obtained by adding the first most significant bit here to the second most significant bit of the gray. So we'll add one plus zero, and that's going to give us a one. The third is obtained by adding the second to the third here. So you have one plus one, and that's going to give us a zero, and we ignore the carry. The fourth is going to be obtained by adding the third to the fourth here. So that's zero plus zero. We are going to have a zero. The fifth binary digit is going to be obtained by adding this zero to the fifth one here. So this zero plus zero, we are going to have a zero. And then the sixth one is going to be obtained by adding this zero again plus zero, and we are going to have a zero. So we have gone back to our binary. So we've moved from our gray back to our one one zero 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 zero. Is it clear for everyone now? I believe it is. So let me just see the chart.
All right. Okay. Good. So we can move on. There's no comment. There's no one saying we have 16 people in class now. Class rep. I think this is the highest number I've seen. So, so then let's continue with our convention. So we've seen that. Okay, okay, that brings us to then you can convert from any code or any radix to any other number. All you have to do is to find a way to get to binary or to decimal. And once you get to binary and decimal, the rest is is passport, right? Because you know how to do uh, uh, conversions. We've done conversions from binary to decimal and then from decimal to binary. And that is it. Uh, if you want to move from, from between these two and you have any other radix, you just send the radix to decimal. Then you can you can go to gray code, you can go to BCD code and all whatnot. So with these things, as I always tell students, they are very easy. And the, the temptation is that because it's very easy, you are tempted to just ignore it. But for, for the principles to stick with you, it, it requires a lot of practice. So if I were you, I will go online and go and search for binary um, uh, conversions or uh, digital conversions, binary to gray code and all of that. You get a lot of work to do and then you can solve them. You practice, 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 and then it becomes a part of you. Just like you practice counting in decimal all your life, and today there is no way you cannot, even if you are drunk, you will know how to count in decimal because it's a part and part of you. What happens is that you practice this thing literally all your life. So practice will really make it stay with you. So get get assignments. I'll put um, tutorials together, and then give you guys to practice on your own. But you have to keep practicing to keep the, the, the principles with you. Okay, so Boolean algebra, we are going to our next big topic. Have we been in class for up to 50 minutes? The lecture started, I think, at um, uh, 2.39. If it was 2.40. That will take us to 3.30. Okay, so at 3.30, we'll take a 10 minutes break. So let's, let's start. Boolean algebra. I just want to see. Um, okay, still 18 people in class. So the operation of almost all... Um, modern digital computers is based on two valued or binary systems it, that has almost become like music to our ears since we started so binary systems were known in the ancient civilization chinese civilization and by the classical greek philosophers who created a well-structured binary system called propositional logic so propositions may be either true or false and are stated as a function of other propositions which are connected by three basic logical connectives and or and not so again the binary was a um, uh, uh, system was used to come up with propositions so something can either be true or false or it can be true and false or it can be true and not false and then um, um it came up with this um logic so I'm sure a lot of you have done uh, uh, some propositional log logic somewhere. I've forgotten the subject that they used to teach all this lo logical thinking, right? So for example, with the statement, I will take an umbrella with me if it's raining or the weather forecast is bad. Connect the proposition, I will take an umbrella with me functionally to two propositions it is raining or the weather forecast is bad. So we can see that the umbrella proposition can be fully determined by raining or weather or weather. In functional terms, we can consider the truth value of the umbrella proposition as the output of the truth values of the other two. So what we are saying basically is we have a statement that says, I will take an umbrella. The umbrella will hold true 
if there is rain or if the weather forecast is bad. So we can represent this by means of a simple block diagram. So let's look at the block diagram. So we have rain or weather forecast and the result is take an umbrella. This is a simple proposition, right? Simple proposition. So if there's rain or there's weather forecast, take an umbrella. So the meaning of the all connected is that the corresponding output is true if either one of the input proposition is true, otherwise it is false, right? If both of them are not true, then it will be false. Since there are only two possible values for any proposition, we can either calculate a truth value for, I will take an umbrella for all possible input conditions. And what are the possible input conditions? It will be, if there's no rain and there's, uh, or there's no bad weather, then we'll have a result here. If there is no rain but there's bad weather, it will give us an output. If there's bad weather and there's no rain, no, if there's rain and there's no bad weather, it gives us an output. And then if there is rain and there's bad weather, it gives us an output. So we would see that if rain is false and bad weather is false, we'll get an output. If rain is false, bad weather is true, it'll give us an output. If rain is true, bad weather is false, we'll get an output. And if both of them are true, we'll get an output. This produces a truth table for a basic all function function so we have um the all function and the truth table for a two input um, um all function would have four different propositions to it and so you, you you have that there i will take an umbrella with me if it is raining or if there's bad weather but if it's not raining and there's no bad weather then do not take an umbrella uh, otherwise the rest hold true that's what an all function is. So the all function is only is only um, false when both propositions are false. If either of them is true or both of them is true, then the output will always be true. So now we can make the propositions as complex as we require. For example, we may make a statement such as, if I do not take the car, then I will take the umbrella if it is raining or the weather forecast is bad. However, to find the correct block diagram, we have to state the proposition in a well-structured way using brackets to indicate how the proposition is composed. So the correct representation is take an umbrella will be as a result of you not taking a car and there is bad weather forecast or there is Rain. So have you seen how the statement now is getting a little more complex? And so we have to restructure our proposition. So if you do, did not take a car and there is bad weather or there is rain, then take an umbrella. Who can attempt to give the block diagram of that? Um, who can attempt to give a block diagram of that proposition based on what we did in the first one? Can you guys use the whiteboard? Can anybody use the whiteboard? Anybody wants to make an attempt? Or we should just move. Okay, let's finish around before we take a five minutes break and then come back. So take an umbrella if you do not take a car and there's bad weather or it is raining. So look at what we have there. Now the, the, the proposition, the block diagram is in a black box or a blue box if you like it. So we have rain, we have bad weather forecast, we have car. So now we are having three inputs, which would result to whether we'll take an umbrella or not. So this is what we now have. If we have rain or we have bad weather and we do not have a car, then we should take an umbrella. Are you guys seeing how we are building this? 
So this is how proposition came about, and then the, the logic gates also came about. So Boolean algebra uses ordinary algebraic notation. And one for true and zero for false. Okay, so in this course, so we use the symbol, we use this the the stop or the dot for and and then we'll use a plus for or connectives which we call boolean operators so the not operator which is a unary we will denote with the post fix prime a post fix prime eg so we have like a prime for instance means it's not a so alternatives that you may see in books are this for and and then this underscore for all but we would always use the plus and we'll use the dot and then we'll use either bar or prime for not and then either an overscore or prefix for for not which we might also use or we would also use interchangeably with the prime over here okay so using the values one for true and zero for false the true tables of the three basic operators are as follows so for and for a two input, we have the proposition if both are, don't hold true, if one of them hold true, um, if either A, uh, B holds true and A is false, or A holds true and B is false, or all of them hold true, then we will get the output. Same for the all, and then not is a unary, as I explained earlier. So that for the and operator, you see that the output will only be true if both inputs are true false for the or operator the output will only be false if both inputs are false and then the not is like an inverter if, if it is true if the input is true then the output will be false and if the input is false the output will be true okay so we'll take this is 20 um 326 so we'll come back at 335 and then we'll continue with um, the Boolean algebra. Who is in class?
All right. Yeah, back. I hope you guys are still here. Hey, the class was quiet throughout. So are we good to continue? Two people left their class, they should tell them on the page, class rep, they should come back, we are, we are continuing with the lectures. Okay, so Boolean operations are carried out in a well-defined order or precedence, which is defined as follows. So if you have, um, let me see, I hope we did not skip anything. Yeah, so if we have um, a logic statement that is connected by different operatives or different operators, then um, just like you, you, if you remember your board mass in, in secondary school, right? Remember your board mass when you have um, an equation that is using the different um, and functions, class, minus, and all that. Then there is an order. The bracket will be treated first then um, off will be treated next, then division, then multiplication, then addition, then subtraction, and then um, addition, then subtraction. It's the same way if you have a Boolean logic expression and it, it has the different operators in it, what you are going to do is you always treat the nots first, so it has the highest precedence, and then the and will go next, and then um, um, the all operative will go the lowest. Expression in brackets are always evaluated first, just like we have in, in both maths, overriding the precedence order. So if you have an expression that is in a bracket, then you treat all of that first, and, and then the Boolean, so if we look at the Boolean equation of the block diagram in figure two, if you remember um, the figure two over here, this one, right? If we look at the Boolean expression, it says that take an umbrella if you do not have a car and there's bad weather or there's rain. So we have use C for car, W for weather, and R for rain, and then U for, for umbrella. So by taking advantage of the precedence rule, we can simplify it by removing the bracket. So not car and weather or rain. So we can use the basic truth tables for and, or, and not to evaluate the overall truth table of a more complex expression. For example, to find out whether we should take an umbrella, we should take an umbrella or not, we can evaluate the overall truth table of the proposition, given in the first equation for every possible input combination. Is someone trying to say something? So now, because we have um, 
because we have three parameters we are dealing with car weather and rain okay if you look at the possibilities that we can have there are going to be eight different ones as we progress i will, will you be shown how to know what are the different and um, the possible logic uh, combinations that we can have for any number of inputs but for now um, i'm just going to say so for for this we are going to have eight possible com uh, logic combinations and so we have for rain represented by w weather by um rain by r weather by w and car by c these are the possibilities we can have zero 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 one zero one zero zero one 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 zero zero one zero one 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 zero and then one 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 so we shall call this the truth table method in this case there are eight possible different combinations of input values since there are three independent inputs so what happens is that whenever you have the number of inputs to know the possible logic combinations that we can have you always take two raised to the power the number of inputs so if we had five inputs then we are going to have 32 possible combinations which will be two raised to the power five and how you are always going to start this you 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 would write the possible combinations like you are counting in binary so that it starts from zero all the way to the highest um, um, um uh, number in that logic combination so if it was 32 you make sure that the counting in binary follows the other 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 all the way to 32. i hope that's clear so you realize that what we what we have we would do with this truth table is we would take the first um, proposition that we had if you remember over here we had what rain or bad weather right it gave us an output then we had not car it gave us an output then we are going to have our rain plus bad weather which is one output and not car so that's going to be a u so you see that this is we'll call the first output x1 which is rain plus bad weather then we'll call the next output x2 which is not car then the next one is what are uh, you take an umbrella if we have x1 and x2 so let's see rain or bad weather for rain or bad weather what do we have over here we are going to have what if there's no rain or there's no bad weather we will not get an output x1 again zero zero you'll give us zero because it's all remember all if one of them holds true the output will be true and if you look through here each of this one has one of them or all of them holding true so apart from this first two the, the rest will go true okay then for not car this is a car column okay so it's like an inverter it is not car so if it's zero yeah this one will be one so it's just going to alternate zero one sorry one zero one zero one zero one zero so that's not car then our final one is um there should be x1 and x2 for us to have an output this one there is x2 but there's no x1 so it will be zero there's no x1 or x2 it will be zero so there's x1 and x2 so this will give you one this will give you zero this will give you one this zero this one and then this zero so now we have been able to get the output of umbrella from that logic expression that we have so let's see now what is boolean algebra we just started with an example so a logic algebra which allows the rules used in algebra of numbers to be applied to logic is what boolean algebra is so it is a system or set of principles underlying the arrangement of elements in a device to perform a specific task um just give me a second i need to pick a call uh where is class
And okay, guys, sorry about that. Let's let's continue. Um Okay, so we said that it is a system or set of principles underlying the arrangements of elements in a device to perform a, a specific task. So Boolean algebra is used to simplify Boolean expressions, which represent combinational logic circuits. It also helps to reduce, I hope I've, I've uh, unmuted my mic. Yes, madam, we can hear you. Oh, okay, great. You can hear me, that's good. So it is used to simplify Boolean expressions which represent combinational logic circuits, and it helps to reduce an expression to an equivalent expression that has fewer operators. So th that is what um, Boolean algebra is. It's just like you have mathematical algebra. Okay, so it has rules that you use to simplify or understand or work with a mathematical expression. So then for Boolean theorem, for Boolean algebra, there are also Boolean laws that are used to simplify Boolean expression. So we are going to look at some laws that we are going to be using throughout um, this course. So um, these are the following laws that have been summarized out. So we have the involution law, which says that A prime prime, so you remember that prime represents a not operator. So A prime prime is equals to A. So if um, a, a Boolean expression or a Boolean element has two bars or two primes on it, then the resulting element is, the resulting expression is a Boolean element itself. Then the complementary law says that a dot a prime is zero and a or a prime is one. So that, that's the first law. Then the idempotent law says a dot a is a and a or a is a. Okay, remember that this expression is not plus and uh, multiplication, it is and and or. So you can call this dot, it's still okay, but it's, it's the an operator and this is the an or operator. Then the associative law says that A and B in bracket and C is equal to A and bracket B and C. And then similarly, A or B in bracket or C is equal to A or B or C in bracket. Then the commutative law says that A and B is equals to B and A, or A does B equals B dot A. And A or B is the same as B or A. The distributive law says that A dot B or C is equals to A dot B, sorry, A dot B or A dot C. See, just like when we have in mathematical algebra, right, if you are opening the bracket, then this is the weird one. Look at this A or B and C. Madam, I can't see the distributive. We can't see that part. You can't see the distributive law. Yeah, we can yeah. see the, you can't the law. The screen ends at the commutative. The screen ends at the commutative law. How is that possible? What happened? I don't know, it's like it's zoomed in, something like that. Now I can see that density law. Um, just a second, let me, let me reduce it then. Let me go back to the normal slide. And then we can continue with it like this. Can you see, can you see, can you see now the distributive law? Yes, madam. Yes, madam. 
Okay, so yes, I'm trying to increase it. Can you see? Can you still see it? Yes, madam. Yeah. Yes. So you can see the distributive law says that A and B or C is the same as A and B or A and C. And then see this weird one. This we don't have in mathematical algebra. This we have. So the weird one is A or B and C is the same as A or B. And A or C, this is weird, right? Because the rest of this is quite common to us or very similar to what we have in mathematical algebra. But we don't have this in mathematical algebra. So keep it at the back of your mind. If you see a logic expression somewhere and it's finding, you are finding difficulties with simplifying it or reducing it, then possibly you might have uh, to use this distributive theory in there and it, it, it should work. So then the identity law says A or zero is zero. Very similar to mathematical algebra, right? A, sorry, A and zero is zero. A dot one is one. A or zero is zero. And then A or one is one. This is also a weird one. But let me explain to you guys the logic behind this. Remember that the maximum, um, um digits that we can have in 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 binary is one so that's the maximum now also um one also represents truth so if something holds true then we represent it by one okay so if we say that something is either a or it is true then truth holds a higher precedence. So that's the whole thing. So anything or one in, in, in digital logic is always one. Because you always go for what is true as opposed to a lesser, uh, a lesser thing. And because this is an all sign, why would you leave the highest, um, the highest possible outcome for something lesser? So that's just that's just the logic behind it, and that's why it is weird. So a or one is one. Anything or one is one. It's just like anything raised to the power zero is one in in mathematics. So also keep that at the back of your mind. Then we have the Morgan's theorem that says that a or b prime is the same as a prime and b prime, and a and b prime is equal to A prime or B prime. So this theorem is widely used in Boolean logic design. The theorem holds for any number of terms. So if we have A or B or C prime, it will be the same as A or B or C prime, which is the same as A or B prime and C prime or a prime or b prime or c prime so you can just use it for any number of expression see the same way if it is for an a and b and c all the way is the same as a prime or b prime or c prime all the way to or x prime i think i should i should go back to the slide and see so in, in a binary system, there is a kind of symmetry. There is some kind of symmetry between two operators. So for Boolean algebra, this symmetry is called duality. So every equation has its dual, which one can generate by replacing the and operator, operators with alls and vice versa. So this is what happens. In, in duality, if you are using the dual function, what happens is that wherever you see an and, you replace it with the OR operator, and then wherever you see the OR, you replace it with the AND. And then wherever you see zeros, you replace it with a one, and vice versa. So for example, A or B and C, sorry, A or A and B equals A would be the same as A dot A or B equals A. So what happens is that wherever there is Plus, yeah, we have replaced it with dot, and the dot, yeah, we have replaced it with plus. So, don't mix up or get confused between dual expression 
which is generated by the above rules, and then the complement or inverted expression, which is generated by applying the not operators. The rules are similar, but they mean very, very different things. So now we can apply the Morgan's theorem to simplify the proposition of not taking an umbrella. Okay, so this was the original expression. U prime. Okay, no. So we had the proposition, I will take an umbrella if I do not have a car or, no, sorry, if I do not have a car and there is bad weather or it is raining, okay. But now we want to simplify the proposition for, I will not take an umbrella. So if we apply the not across board, we are going to have an umbrella, not umbrella, to be equal to C prime dot W or R or prime. Okay. First thing we are going to do is, we are going to apply the uh, order of precedence to your, uh, 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 rule. So we'll deal with what is in the bracket first. And then over here, we have this prime here and this prime here. So which theorem are we going to use? We can apply this De Morgan's theorem here, right? Because we have everything in bracket and it is not. Before we can even work with that, we have to break it down. So we will have our A or B, A and B all prime, and then A or B all prime. Here, what do we have? We have C prime dot W or R all prime. So this becomes what C prime prime or W or R or prime, right? Then next step is we are going to have we are going to have to open this bracket up, and again we can still apply the Morgan's theory so that a U prime will be C prime prime or W. This will change to dot right W prime dot R dot, so that we have now. Final simplification, we we'll just have a, I will not take an umbrella. For you not to take an umbrella, it means you have a car or there is no bad weather and there is no rain. You see how that proposition has come? Very easy. So if you have a car, no need for umbrella. If there is no bad weather and there is no rain, no need for umbrella. So these two conditions will go. Is it clear? So we just apply the Morgan theory now. We are going to do this work over here. All of this, I, I think I want us to, okay, let's do it together. We'll do it together just to apply the Boolean um, um, theorems and then we see how uh, uh, to create better understanding of, of what the theorems. Then we'll do your decades. Okay. So now, let's, let's go through these examples quickly, just as a way of reinforcing the theory. But before that, do, does anybody have any question with this simplification here? Let me go to your chat. Seventeen people in class now, class reps. No question. Everybody has understood. Okay, so we can progress nicely. All right. So look at this. Give the relationship that represents the, the dual of the Boolean property A or one equals one. Remember the dual um, 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 property states that for dual, wherever you see a, um, an or function, you replace, it, you, you replace it with an and, and then wherever you see a zero, you replace it with a one. So now which of them, number one, number two, number three, number four, or number five, which of them would be the dual of this function, a or one equals one. The star here has been used to represent the and, and then the plus for all, and then the prime for not. So I'm waiting, somebody should um, give me the answer. Which of the numbers would, would be the dual for 
the Boolean expression A or one equals one. Anybody wants to try? Okay, Abdul says number one. Let's see. Abdul, no. With the dual ex expression, we have um, whenever you see the all function, all operators, sorry, you represent it with the an operator, and whenever you see a zero, you, you replace it with a one. Michael, no. So number two is, is going to be the most likely answer as destiny has said. So it is A and zero equals zero. So A and zero equals zero is the correct answer. And then, sorry. So give the best definition of a literal. A literal, we are going to see it later. A literal is just a Boolean variable or the complement of a Boolean variable. So number one or number two is correct. For this one, yeah, you guys can you can you can search it online. So a literal is a Boolean variable or the complement of a Boolean variable. This is a, it's a term that is commonly used. So three is the correct answer for that one. Okay, so now simplify the Boolean expression. Bracket A or B or C bracket close, and then bracket again D or E or prime bracket close, or A or B or C in bracket, and D or E in bracket. So choose the best answer for that expression. So we have that there. How are we going to simplify this? So we have A or B or C. And then we have that as well. How are we going to simplify this? Anybody wants to try? Remember, let's go back to the Boolean. Um, the Boolean theorem. So remember that we had, um, if we have this, look at that, a, a dot b or c, we can express it as a dot b or a dot c. So it means that if we have a common term, we can always factor it out. And if you look at this here, what is it? If you look at this here, what do you realize? A or B or C is common to both sides, right? So if we factor it out, we are going to have A or B or C in bracket, and then in bracket D or E prime or D or E. What do you realize? D or E prime and D or E, they are complements of each other. And so what Boolean theorem are we going to apply over there? We realize that over here, we have what? A or A prime is equals to one. And that's the case we have what D or E prime or D or E. So that is like if you represent everything in bracket by a certain A or X and an A prime, then it means that the resulting um, the resulting expression in bracket is going to reduce to one. So our answer is just going to be left with what A or B or C. I don't know if if you are following, but let me. Let me see the whiteboard again. So I'm going to page two of the whiteboard and then we'll just use it. So we have what? We have A or B. I think they tap with a pen. We have A or B or C in bracket in bracket d
E. Then what's the next one? Is it or? We have the same thing. A. Or B. Or C. In bracket, we have D. or E or prime. Okay, so since A or B or C is common, to, is common to both of them, we are going to have what? A or B So we are going to have A or B or C, then in bracket. So we have factored that out in bracket. Then we are going to have another bracket, D or E. Then or Don't worry if my letters are going overboard. Or D or E prime. So we have that over there. Now this is just like A, and then this is like what? A prime, right? And if we use the, the Morgan's theorem or the Boolean theorem, A or A prime equals one, then all of this is going to go to what? It's going to go to one, right? And so we are just going to have A or B or C dot one and again if we use another the Morgan theorem anything dot one is the thing itself so our resulting answer is just going to be what a or b or c easy so um if we come back here then you realize that the answer is number one number one will be correct a or b or c then now Let's look at this. Which of the following relationship represent the dual of the property X or X, X prime Y equals to X or Y? So we want the dual of the property. And again, remember we said that the dual means that what? To get the dual of the property, anywhere you see or you, you, you replace it with N, and when you see, wherever you see an, you replace it with, or anywhere you see zero, you replace with one. So please, you guys should work it out quickly and then put it in the chat box. Let me see the first person who is going to get, um, the first person who will get the correct answer. So put it in the chat box. Number one, number two, number three, number four, or number five, which one is the correct answer? So for dual, the property says that replace all the alls with ands, the ands with alls, and then the zeros with one. I'm going to the chat box now. Can you still see the slide? Okay, Michael, Tete Anna was the first person to post, and it says number two, destiny number two, Michael Yao, number two, Abdul number two. Hmm. So let's let's go and, and look at it together. Ken also number two. Hey, Ken, are you sure you solved it and got the number two, or you are just 
uh, following. So let's see the dual of the property. So this is X, right? So X or X and Y. Remember, between this X prime and this Y, there's a dot in between because even though the dot is not there, it is two literals or two independent variables that are uh, multiplying, if you like it. And then we have X or Y. So we are going to have X dot in bracket X prime or Y. That's what this one is going to become, right? Equals to X, Y. So let's see what we have here. X dot, this one is not X prime or Y. So they didn't, they didn't get us the dual of this one. So this cannot be the answer. Certainly this cannot be the answer because that, well, that was not even the expression. Obviously this was not an expression. So we are there with this. So we have X and and the and the dot has been separated in bracket x prime or y equals to x y so number five is obviously the correct answers engineers you guys bring your minds and uh, yeah. destiny says number five destiny we had already madam so, i had done this before you were so who, who, who is speaking michael Yes. Michael, do you, you did it and why did you put your answer? Right. Because answer. your answer, sorry. My answer, my answer was before you started explaining. All of you me. didn't post it. Did you post it? Yes, please. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I saw it. Are you sure? No, this one, I, I started explaining. This for 11. I started explaining already. No. I, started explaining. I did not see your answer before then because it's 410. And we are now at 411. No, I started explaining already. So um uh that that will not have that, but of course you, you have the understanding, that's what is most important. So let's 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 move on. Okay, so um so we have that. That will be the correct answer for that. Then number five, number five says giving the function f of x y z is equal to x dot z whether the dot is there or not if there are two variables together then it is connected by the and operator or the dot so x z or z in bracket x prime or x dot y bracket close the equivalent simplified the equivalence most simplified so remember that whenever a question is written, every single statement or every single word in the statement counts. So the equivalent most simplified Boolean representation for F would be, so they want you guys to use a Boolean reason to simplify, the Boolean um, theorems to simplify this expression. So what are you guys going to do? What's the first step? Somebody should unmute the mic and tell me if you had this expression, what's the first thing you are going to do? You have exit. If you have a sheet of paper in front of you, you can just write the equation down so that we can go back to the Boolean laws and, and we see what we are supposed to do. So we have exit, right? Or Z into bracket X prime or X, Y. Okay, so that's we have that over there. And so what will be the, the first step? What will be the first step? Let me let me let me scroll back. So let's see the Morgan theorem, bracket issues. Because if we are following other precedents, we should solve what is in bracket first, right? That's what other precedents said. Solve what is in bracket. First. So if we have um, A dot B or C, then we can expand the bracket using the distributive law. So our equation now becomes what XZ or X prime Z, right? Or X, Y, Z. So that's what we are going to have. I'm, I'm saying it out, and I think for you to follow, because using the whiteboard is quite slow. If I, I, will, I will have to get a tablet with a pen. Well, next semester we are going back to the classroom. Tablet with a pen so that we can, I can be writing faster on the whiteboard. So, but as I'm saying it out, you can be, you can be jotting it down so that you can follow. 
So we have xz or x prime z or x y z. What do you realize? You realize that um, there is z common between x x z and x prime z. Okay, so we can put that into another bracket. That will give us x in bracket. Sorry, that will give us z into bracket x or x prime, isn't it? Then or x y z. And you can see from the complementary law that a or a prime is one. So if we take the x or x prime is one, and then we also have the um, identity law a dot one is a. So we have a z dot one will be z plus x y z, right? If we have z, so now our equation has been reduced to what z or x y z right so we can factor out again z and then we are going to be left with what one or x y madam isn't it madam yes madam i'm confused because you're not writing on the board so you have to listen you have to really listen attentively and then pay attention so let's let's um but I put the laws there so that you can use it and simplify the expression by your uh, yourself. But let, let me see. Let me go to the whiteboard and then um, try to. Let me go to the whiteboard and then we use it. So I'm back to the whiteboard so you guys can count this. So let's see. Uh, so we have the expression, the expression was what xz we have xz or z into x prime or xy. So that's the original expression. And by um, 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 order of precedence in Boolean expression, we will deal with what is in the bracket first. And I said that if we use the Boolean, the Boolean law, if we use the Boolean distributive law over here, the distributive law, we can expand the bracket into A or AB or AC. So if we come back to the whiteboard, then we can expand this one. So we have um, xz. And then or then this one becomes what mz, right? And then this one becomes or using the distributive beauty flow, this one becomes what x, y, z. Okay. You see that there's a common z here, which is going to simplify this one using another Boolean law. So we can factor the z out, and then we are going to have what? x or x prime, right? Then this is or x, y, z. So we have that. Let's go back to the laws so that this is for the purposes of reinforcement. So we have, um, hold on. We have prime is one. And we also have the identity A. We are going to apply these two laws we are going to apply this to our expression. So this is like a plus a1. This one is going to go to what? One, right? And then our z or one is going to go to what? Z. So this becomes z plus what? X, Y, Z. 
And so what does this equation also become? We can still factor out the z again using the distributive law. And this is going to be what? One plus xy. Right? So then come back to your Boolean law. You remember, you remember I um I iterated this one so much to you guys. A or one, anything or one is one, it will hold true. Because anything or true, the truth must must be higher than anything else. So one or x, y is going to be one. All of this will go to one, right? So we are left with what z dot one, and so our final our final um, expression is z. So let's let's come back to the options that we have over here to see whether we have that. So where was it? Okay, now we are done with that one. So what will be the, the, the answer here? So we have this, 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 and this. The, the right answer will be none of the above, number five, because the final, the, the simplified expression for F is Z, as we have solved and then we have seen. Okay, so now from number six all the way to number 10, you guys are going to work it out. And I'll just... Um, um, yes. Madam, uh, because um, it's it's saying simplified, so then the number the number uh, solution number two can be the answer. Solution number the, uh, answer number two can be correct. We have z number two is not correct, so number five is the correct answer. Because what we none of the above. What we solved, we had um seven plus x y z in it before we factorize out z. I, I don't get what you, what you are saying. The, what we just worked on the whiteboard, on the yes. second, uh, third to last step, we had Z plus X, Y, Z. X. Absolutely. Yes. But it is not the most okay. simplified. Okay. So if we had just said simplified, then we would have left it there. But it is not the most simplified because you see that there is Z that is common to both of these. So it was supposed to be simplified further. So if you factorize out the z, then it, it, there's still a, a lot more simplified. So this, so what is the most simplified Boolean representation for f? So this is a simplified representation, but it is not the most. Okay, madam. You should have told you that yes, the answer is in a way that will be tricky. So it is not the most simplified version because. We can still factor out z and then this will be simplified further. So the, the right answer is none of the above. Okay. There's the, the most simplified is not here because the correct answer is z. Okay, so number six. Which of the following Boolean function is algebraically complete? So a function is algebraically complete if it can generate an and an or and a not function from it. So if it has and, or, and not, then we can say that that function is algebraically complete. So um, if you look at options one, two, three, four, and five, which one we say is algebraically? So please, you can jot these things down in your notes. It is not stated clearly in your notes, but of course it has come up in question and then we can, we can always um, use it. So if you look at those functions in, in on the on the on the um, in the di five different options, which one do you think we can generate all those functions? Yes.
the correct option is option five. Now we have the all here, we have the not here, and then if you look at the Boolean um, algebra, we can generate an and function from this function. Let me let me see. The Boolean theorems. Oh, I'm even on this side. Okay, we'll, we'll come back to that particular question later when we do um, the gates and then I show you how the not the NAND gate can be used. It's called a universal gate. So let me leave it now. It will be a bit complex to explain for you guys to understand. So let's let's keep that question and then we mark it. When we get to the universal gate, I would I will come back to that question and we'll, we'll, we'll solve it and tell you why that particular option is is algebraically complete. Okay, so we have, um, we, are, we are skipping number six. Let's go to number seven. Number seven says, simplification of the Boolean expression A or B prime, that's in bracket, A or B in bracket or prime, and C or D or E prime, or A or B in bracket, all in bracket prime, use which of the following results? So what they want is for us to simplify this expression. So quickly, you guys should simplify and then I'm giving you five minutes to tell me which would be the correct option. My ex will be on the chat box to see the first person who, who gives the correct answer.
is me there. So Joseph has given number four, Andrew number four. Let's let me go to the slide and see. Yeah, number seven. Joseph, are you sure? Are you sure you've used all the theorem, or do you want me to take it back to the theorem? You can write down the equation and then take it back. And because even just from looking at it, um, just from looking at it, I think there's some more simplification to be done. I'm going to write the equation. I'm waiting for. So we have A or B prime, C or D or E prime, or A or B or prime. So Raising down the equation, come back. What's the plan? Let me let me just see if somebody has. Well, just by looking at it, what I'm seeing. Or um, let me see. Um. Um, destiny to Michael to let me go and see what number two is. So that's in me. Can you unmute your mic and tell us how, what you did? Because yes, number two is the correct answer. Destiny or Michael, can any of you unmute your mic and tell us um, how you solved this? Are you guys there? Michael, can you hear me? Michael, Destiny, if you guys don't um, speak, then I'll discount it. I need to know how, how were you able to arrive at the answer? Why has the class gone so quiet? Is are you people still here? Yes, madam. And neither Destiny or Yahoo gave the correct answer can tell us how they came up with the answer. Okay, it, it, it wouldn't count. It will not count. So um Abdul, have you attempted it? Yes, madam, but I don't have the formulas. I've not written the formulas down, so I'm finding it difficult to simplify it. So, but you, you have the equation. Yeah, I have the equation. 
So where where have you got into? What do you have right now? Um, madam, I tried solving it, but I got the answer for. Uh, I got uh, so the, uh, the answer number five. That's what I got. So let, I, I just need to know the steps. What did you do? That's what I, I want to see. I want to be able to see what did you do? Okay. Um, for the A or B prime, um, in one of the formulas, you were saying that when you have A prime, um, all brackets, A prime again, you will get A. So I try um, taking the A plus uh, A or B prime, then the other A or B prime to get A or B, to get A or B. I don't, I don't know how I explain it to you. I don't have the formula, so I was just trying to do something. No, but... Let's look at the equation entirely because even the first example I solved on the whiteboard, it has a very similar pattern to this one. So I was expecting that you guys would be able to follow and then um, um, use that same example, or you were not even copying when when I was writing. So if you look at this, it has a very similar pattern. So we had um, x z plus z into um, x prime y. When we opened the bracket, we saw that there was common terms. Now, this one, we have A plus B prime. Let me, let me use the whiteboard. So this one, we have A or B So we have A or B prime. Destiny and I will just copy the answers and then let the call. C or D. Or e. So we have this C or D or E or prime. Yes. Yeah. So we have that. Or. And then we have what? Or A or B or prime. Yes. A or B or prime. Okay, so now what do you realize? You realize that A or B or prime is, is common to both the two expressions in the, um, in the, this and if you factor it out, that's how you, you always look at an equation. If you factor out A or B or prime, is it going to simplify your equation for you? And in this case, it is a yes, because if you factor out A plus B or prime, this is going to remain a one. So once we have a one, a single one standing alone in an equation, it makes our lives very, very easy for us. So if we know that, fact, because it's not every time that you factor out will be um, helpful. But in this case, it will certainly be helpful because if we factor out A or B or prime, if we factor out A or B or prime, then what are we going to be left with? We are going to be left in the bracket. We are going to be left with C or D or, or E prime plus one. Yes, or E or prime plus one. Plus one. Don't say plus. This is a digital class. So say or one. Or one. So this is or one. Yes. And what, what, what does the Boolean theorem says? And I explained it in this class. I said that anything or one, the one will hold true. So all of this will go to one. Yes. So what are we going to be left with? We are just going to be left with A or B. Prime. Or prime. Or prime. Now, again, with another Boolean expression, you see that this is a longer, longer expression. The distributive, is it the distributive law now? Um, the distributive law says that, let's go back. Yes, the distributive law says that, is it that one? 
or is it a demogan theory says that a or b or prime is equal to a prime or b prime this is a simpler um, version this is a simpler representation than this because this has um, um, this bracket has been removed so it makes it simpler to handle so we can take off the bracket and then over here we bring our equation to be our equation now will become taking off the bracket our equation now will become what a prime dot um, b prime yes a prime and b prime so from here there's no further simplification to be done again so um if we go to the options that we have over here that was what number was it number eight no number seven if you go to the options that we have here then number two obviously is the correct answer which um the those people copy so we have that and then that becomes the answer so let's try with number eight i want to be sure that you guys have understood how to use the um boolean um this in expression the, the thing is you don't have the you, you if it was in class you are seeing the notes or the theorems there and there you can use it but obviously even the fact that you could not expand the bracket or um sorry factorize from the bracket it means that there's still a little more work to be done for you guys to get it so let's see um let's see the number number eight says so giving f equals a prime b prime or c prime or d prime or e prime which of the following represents the only correct expression for f remember and as i always say every single word was not just put there because the person wanted to write english they it, it, it plays a role so the one the expression that represents the only correct um, expression for f please um just a minute my car is at the mechanics and the mechanic is calling so i have to hear how far they have gone Madam, please, can you send it back to where the laws are, especially the demography? Okay, so okay, just a minute. All right, sure. Hello? Yes. Sorry? They can't be ready on Saturday. Okay. All right. Okay, that's fine. um give me a second let me call you back All right, so so let's see. Let me see the question again so that I'm sure which theory. So number eight says that uh, giving f equals to this, which of the following represents the only correct expression for f? So um, the expression is A prime B prime or C prime or D prime or E prime. Okay, so we have prime 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 connected by an or function. What do you think? I hope you guys have all copied the the expression. So let me go to the Morgan's theorem because I think that's what we need. I think you need this. So somebody should solve it, and I'm looking to see the correct, um, the answer on, on the page. Let me make this call quickly. It's done. Okay.
Anyone making a headway? And then we are on it. Hey, it's taking too long. You should have finished by now. Madam, please go back to the possible answer. Okay. Let me Question me see. eight. Okay, so so we have f equals a prime b prime plus plus C prime plus D prime plus E prime. So this will be and it's, it's supposed to let me go back to the Morgan theory and see something. Yes. Um, I'm getting um, F equals A or B or prime. And A or B or prime. A and B or, 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 or C and D and E or prime. Or C. C and D. Sorry, all C. C and D and E. All prime. All prime. Yes, madam. Mm, are you sure? Let's see which theorem did you apply? The, the Morgan's theorem. So the Morgan's theorem here says that A or B or C or prime is the same as. Is the same as A prime and B prime and C prime. Okay, so in this case, we have A prime and B prime. So you can go back to A or B or prime. Yes. Then, similarly, we have A and B and C. Yes, A prime or B prime or C prime can be C or D or E or prime. So it can be and. Okay, okay, so hold on. So this becomes so this if we apply the Morgan theorem, this is going to become the A prime B prime is going to be A or B or prime, which you got it correct, right? Yes, madam. So it's going to be A or B or prime, and then the C prime plus or D prime or E prime, this is still going to be or then the C prime or D prime or E prime is going to be C and D and E or prime. Yes. So now we have A or B or prime or C and D and E or prime. So what is that going to leave us with? If we see apply the Morgan theorem again the second time. Because we still have uh, um, 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 we still have we still have um, a or b or prime or so it's, it's divided. So this now will now become since all of this is prime. So this will now become what a or b and c or d or e. Is that not it? Sorry, A or B and C, D, E. But no, I don't get that part. Hold on. So we have, um, so we have the Morgan theory says A, A or B or prime is the same as A prime or B prime, right? Yes, madam. 
sorry, it's the same as A prime and B prime. And then we have A dot B all prime is the same as A prime or B prime. So now we say that if we have this, we can simplify it straight down to this. All of them will take the prime connected with the AND operator. And we, if we have an AND operator or prime, all of them will take the prime and then separated by an OR operator. Then now we have an equation that says that F is equals to A prime and B prime. Is that not what we have? Or C prime or D prime or E prime. Right? So let's just, let's just, in the first instance, let's just assume that these are all um, individual Boolean variables separated by an OR operator. So what are we going to do now? So we have all of this. So we have here, and then we want to move back to here. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, madam. What we have in our expression is we have this. We have a certain, let's just say A prime, B prime is the same as, um, is the same as one variable. Let's just call it Y prime. Okay. So let's say it is Y prime or C prime or D prime or E prime. So it's similar to what we have here. Do you get? Yes. So this expression becomes, yes, this expression now becomes, we can take it back to become, um, a A B dot C D E is that not it? Yes. Yes, I think that should be it. So we have A prime, B prime. So let's separate that one. So this one becomes A prime. So which of the following represent the only correct expression for F? So this is, this one can be, so it's, it's not a simplification. It's just another correct expression that has represented this. So applying the, um, um, Boolean theorems or the Morgan theorems, whatever it is. So it, it, it didn't necessarily say that we should simplify because if we take it from here back into, okay, well, it still simplifies it, but it's not a simplification. We are just looking through these options and then. It's a correct expression that represents F. Then, um, 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 if we go back to the modern theory, so this is A prime, B prime, because it's only the modern theorem that can help us here, C prime or D prime or E prime. It certainly cannot be this, because our expression, oh, hold on, wait a minute, we are making a mistake. The question is, which of the following represents the only correct expression for f prime? So f is equal to this. Which is the only correct expression for f prime? Sorry about that. Myself, I'm tired and my, my mind is just on my car because it just came from servicing and I don't understand why I had a breakdown in the middle of the road today. So, um, Yes, so the, the, the correct question is, which is the only correct expression for F prime? Okay, that's where the whole confusion was. So F prime will mean that we are taking all of this expression, F prime, then we are going to have what A bar, A prime, B prime, or C prime, or D prime, or E prime, or prime. Are we there? I think I should go to the whiteboard. Yes, my dad. I've gotten. 
So the expression was F. My name is so small, so we, I can't even see whether it's F or F prime. Expression. Prime. Yes, my I, myself. I'm just I'm just not too um, focused in the class today because I'm following up. I'm distracted with following up on this kind of issue. So let's let's see. Um, so we have a bar b bar a prime b prime or c prime or d prime or a prime okay and now the question is which is the only correct expression for f prime so f prime will now be equal to all of this all prime i think there's no point spending time to write in the equation all over so f prime will be equal to that okay so now if you have this expression then the morgan theorem let's let's see what the morgan theorem has to offer us so if we come back here I believe it's the Morgan theorem, unless you guys think that we, we can use another theorem, because that's the only theorem that has, um, that has similar, what, what we are looking for. So now, if we have that, then we can easily use this, because this is saying that A dot B all prime will give you this, and then A or B all prime will give you this. And now we are having our F prime to be equals to this all prime. So let's 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 go. So if we have that in bracket, if you can still see the whiteboard, let me see whether we can minimize and then have the two screens. The solution will be fit one. Madam, then the solution will be the fit one rather. Okay, let, just a second. Let, let me let me let's see. Let's just get the understanding, which is what is most oops. What is most important? So let's see. Um, so you said a solution will be the fit one. So if we have that, then now we can open this bracket. If we are going to open this bracket, remember the variable in here did not have a prime. So when we expanded the bracket to remove this bracket and this prime out here then the the variable now took a prime so it means that all of this will now be prime prime right so this is going to be f prime will be this is going to be um this is going to be f prime will now be equal to it will now be equal to a A prime, B prime, all prime, right? A prime, B prime, all prime. And then, um, dot, this is going to be an, right? Because now all of this, I'm, we are considering them as single variable. Dot C prime prime, right? D prime prime, if you like it. E prime prime. I'm just doing it step by step so that you see. So this one now becomes um, A prime, B prime, or prime. Prime is not the right word to it. So this becomes dot C, D, E, right? So if we have that the C D E, then this in the bracket we can apply the Morgan theorem to it because we have A dot B or prime to be equal to A prime B prime. Since these ones have prime on it, if we apply the prime, this is just going to be reduced to what A or B. Then we are going to have C D. B. 
So that's what this equation, that equation will be reduced to. So um, I just want us, you guys, let's just wrap up with the last two questions on this set and then we call it a day. So we are going to have A or B and then C, D, E, which is going to be the correct answer. So the answer will be number five. Are we all clear? Abdul, that was what you said, right? Number five, isn't it? Yes, madam. Okay, great. So um, the, the rest yeah, of the I students in the it class, it has their... In a different way. Sorry? I solved it in a different way. Okay, you want to share with us? Um, the A prime um, and B prime, I made it to be A or B all prime. Then um, I have an uh, or C prime or D prime or E prime. Then I came down to say um, the C prime or D prime or E prime will be C and D and E all prime. Then at the bottom, okay. of this, um, I made F. The F to is equal to A or B all prime or C and D and E all prime to be equal but how were you able to get that because because remember that our original f was a prime b prime or c prime or d prime or e prime and now they ask us to solve for f prime yes. so it means that f prime means you have to put all of this and then in bracket or not do anything to this equation without applying this prime and so whilst once you have applied this prime and this bracket has come here in simplifying this, you must first try to remove this bracket. Because the, the whole thing was we are solving for F prime. Yes, madam. So we start we have an equation in F and then we need to solve for F prime. I don't know whether you started from here or you 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 first of all work with this equation. Madam, because um after I finish doing it, because the prime is common to the two of them. Um, I made it that then F prime will be equal to when the two of them don't have the prime on it. Oh, right, right, right. I see. So hold on. I don't I, I don't get what you just said. So it means you simplify this equation first, then you apply the prime yes. later. Yes, madam. I, I wish we could see on the board what you 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 are saying, but um but let me just say, then you write it uh, in your book and see. Okay, all right. So I think I, I will. F, F is equal to. So let's see. The original equation F is equal to A prime or E prime, yes. For my solution. Then what was your next step? Okay. My next step was um, A or B all prime. A or B all prime. Or C and D or and E all prime. C, D, E, all prime. Yes. Okay, which theorem did you use? Let me go back to your notes. Morgan. Let's go and see the Morgan theorem because that looks like the Morgan. So if we have A prime B prime, that will give you A or B or prime. This is correct. And then if you have C D E, that will give you C D E or prime. Okay, yes, that's also correct. Okay. So um F so then prime. what did you do next? F I simply yes, F, F is supposed to this. To that. Yes. yes. So if um, the yes. prime on the first one and the second one, when I put all together, I can make all as one prime. What I'm saying is that if F is equal to A or B or prime plus C and D and E or prime, then yes. F, prime, F yes. prime itself will be A or B without the prime and C and D and E without prime. Because their prime affects all of them. This is very correct. 
It's very correct. Um, but let me see. So f prime will now be. So if you take this to be prime, then if you put this all prime, then this just becomes a or b and c d e. Yes, that's correct. So that's it's still the Morgan. So you you uh, we what you basically did was apply the Morgan's theorem twice. So 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 that's that's very correct and that's brilliant. Okay. So then um the rest of you are very quiet. I don't know whether you are following or you really just don't care, but I hope you are following. So that 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 was that for number eight. So number option five is obviously the correct answer. So let's see number nine and ten, and then we call it a day. The equivalent representation for Sorry, an equivalent representation for the Boolean expression a, a bar or one is what? One, isn't it? Anything or one is always one. So there's no question. Okay, let's see this one. Simplification of the Boolean expression a, b, or a, b, c, or a, b, c, d, or a, b, c, d, or a, b, c, d, e, f. Use which of the following results? So can we simplify this? They have told us that the simplification. So we have A, B, or A, B, C. Who is it? So it's up to F. So we have, um, let's, let's see this. I'm bringing another board. So we have A, B, or A, B, C, or A, B, C, D, Or A, B, C, D, E, or A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, so we have that expression. Look, guys, whenever you guys see a logic expression, don't panic. Don't look at the plenty letters. Just look at what is there to simplify. First, what is common to all of them? Second, is there anything in a bracket? If you expand the bracket, will it simplify your life or complicate your life? Uh, so those two things, you're always looking out for them. What is common that if you factorize out, it will simplify your life? Or what is in a bracket that if you open the expand the bracket, will it simplify or complicate your life? Once you do those two, then everything just follows step by step, and then you apply the theorem and you are good to go. So in this case now, A B is common to all of them. And if I factorize out A B, what will happen? This first A B here will go to one. And obviously, if I have a one, then my life becomes simple. So we have this is going to be A B into one plus c plus c d please it's not plus it's or my mind is then plus or c d e and i'm saying the same thing again c d e or c d e s so you have that. Now what happens? Anything or one is one. All of this will go to one. Because it is one or CD or whatever, it is one. One is true, means it's whole true. So it means that your final answer is just what? A, B. Easy, easy. So we have here, number two will be the correct answer, which is, a, B. Okay, so we have come to the end of the class today. Um, 
I'll put the notes over there. I would um, give you some work. I don't know whether it should be a graded work or not, but I'll put some tutorials together. I hope I can do that over the weekend and then put it in your class so that you guys can use it to practice. Yes, it's going to be a graded work so that you can practice for me to be sure that um, you have understood how to use the Boolean expression. So do we have any question? If there's a question, ask. If not, then we call it a day. Any question, Abdul, Derek, Michael, Duke, Vincentia, Joseph, Michael, no question. No, madam. All right. No okay. Question. So thank you, guys. Your notes will be up by 7 p.m. It will, it will be, um, I'll post it in your class. If by 7 p.m. you don't see the notes, class rep, kindly uh, send me a reminder. Attendance, maximum attendance for class today was um, 17. So I hope that the attendance has been taken. Okay, have a good evening. Thank you. Sorry? Maximum attendance was 20 at a certain point. 20, the 20 include my account, which is yeah, two, yeah. so it means 18 people. So it means it was 18, so please make sure it's, it's no more than 18 for today. I'm going to record that as well. Thank you. Okay.